Okay, welcome back students. So in this question we're using, we're trying to organize the statistics for 30 students in a class using what's called a two-way table. Okay, they didn't say it's a two-way table, they said it's a table, but this is called a two-way table. Okay, and it's a method of organizing data when two categories are being considered. Um, so it's not just you, one value that's been considered for every student. There, you're, been, you're asking what's their gender, are they a boy or a girl, and what language are they learning, French, German, and Spanish. Now this is made particularly easy from, by the following. We're going to read the question carefully. There are 30 students in the class. Okay, we know that already, and that's where that number there, 30, comes from. Each student studies exactly one of the following languages. So it says they must study one because it's exactly one. And that's a very makes the statistics very, very easy. Th that's called both mutually exclusive, meaning they can't study two subjects, and it's also exhaustive, meaning everybody studies a language. Okay, and it makes our analysis and our calculations very simple. Okay. Now, you don't have to worry about those big words I said, mutually exclusive and exhaustive. They're, um, they're very mathematical terms. But the simple idea is written right here in the question. Each student studies exactly one of the following languages. That's very important, and we'll always see that at this level. Okay? It makes our calculations very easy. <clears throat> Okay, and it says here that the table below shows some of the data. So that's, that's the situation. There's 30 students in the class. Let's go and, and re read the first question. Complete the table. Very good. So we're going to be putting our numbers in, and we'll do our calculations down below, and we'll put our answers in above. Okay, so let's start off, as we do when we're reading, let's start off here. Okay, so the first piece of data we need to put in is how many boys study French? Okay. Now, the number of students that study French is 15. Four of them are girls. So the rest must be boys. And 15 take away 4 is 11. So I'm going to put 11 here. Okay, let's go to the next question. Very, very similar. The next row, I, I should say, is the row for German. Okay, now for German, well, let's get a sense of what's going on. There are two boys studying German, and in total, there are eight students studying German. So how many of them are girls is the question to fill in here. Well, it must be eight, subtract two, and that's six. Okay, so let's keep going with our strategy on to Spanish. Spanish, well, we don't know how many boys. We know how many girls, but we don't know the total. So this is an issue. We can't solve it. Will we give up? No, we'll move on and we'll see. Could we get some other information or could we could we approach the question from a different perspective? So when you're problem solving, you're building resilience and in resilience, you don't throw your hands in the air and say, I can't do it. You keep going. So we go to the next row. And by the way, the next row may not be helpful either. It probably is, but there are columns as well. So there's another strategy is to look at a column by column basis. But we'll go to the next row. This is the row for totals. Okay, so there we learned that there is a total of 16 boys. Sorry, yeah, there's a total of 16 boys. There's a total of 30 students in total, all students being considered. And so I can put this answer here in, which is 30 minus 16, and that comes out to be 14. So we can fill that in. Okay, but that doesn't help us with these two numbers. Well, we could get this one actually. 
And we could get both of them, but let, let's, so how, what strategy are we using to find Spanish um, students? So we're going to look at, on, on uh, uh, and it's called a two-way table for this very reason. We, we were looking at the first way, which is the way this way, rows. Now we're looking at in the second way, which is to look at it these ways in columns. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to approach this column here. So in total, there are 16 boys. 11 of them study French, two of them study German. So you'll notice there's a slightly more complicated calculation because we're using the associative property of subtraction where we can subtract two and 11 at the same time. Okay, um, so we can do that on our calculators and we get three. Okay, that leaves one unknown piece of information to go in here where I'm hatching there now. And that would be 30 take away 8, take away 15, which is 7. Now, should I just leave it at that? No, you should check. It's a two-way table, so we could check that all our ways are good. Okay, so it's very important to check your work. It's a good thing to learn, especially in problem solving, which is what we're doing here. So is it true that these three numbers add up to 16? Yes. These three numbers add up to 14? Yes. These three numbers add up to 30? Yes. Now, is it true that these two numbers add up to 15? Yes. These two numbers add up to 8? Yes. And these two numbers add up to 7? Yes. And sorry, I keep going. These two numbers add up to 30? Yes. So everything has been checked and we're certainly right. Okay. We drive on. As now we're looking for the next question to understand it. A student is chosen at random from the class. What is the probability that the student studies Spanish? Okay, so this is a probability question and it's one of the only places where we where, where we where we use a formula to calculate probability of an event. Okay, the probability of an event it's this particular outcome, a specific outcome in this case study Spanish, is equal to the number of students that study Spanish. The number in the event over the total number of students in this case, or in the, the number of outcomes is another way of saying that. You might see that as the probability of the event equals the number, cardinal number of events over the cardinal number of outcomes. But one way or the other, we need to know how many students study Spanish. We're learning here that the total number of students that study Spanish is seven. Okay, because I'm going straight across from Spanish and I'm going down through the totals. So it's seven. So the answer is a fraction, seven. The total number of students in the class is 30. That's the answer, seven over 30. And that's fine like that. You do not need and you do not want to put that in your calculator as a decimal. You do want to make sure it doesn't reduce though. So you can often say seven over 30 equals seven over 30 to show you've made sure that it doesn't reduce because there's nothing in common between seven and 30. And that's your answer. Now a girl is chosen at random. Now we must be careful here about how, how we pace ourselves here. A girl is chosen at random from the class. Great. What is the probability that she studies French? Now we'd be careful of how we think about this in terms of what is the situation or what is the outcomes? So last time we kind of looked at the whole picture and looked at how many people studied Spanish out of 30. But this time we're focusing all our attention on this information here, okay? What was it again? What was my language? French. Okay, so the question is, 
the, the, the question has been confined to girls only. So the number at the bottom, the number of events, will be 14. Okay? And the number of specific events, how many girls study French, is 4. So 4 over 14. And I'm not surprised. They did something very interesting here. Okay? So the, the probability... You can just, you don't have to write everything down. You can go 4 over 14. But what I say they did something interesting here is they've put a fraction that will reduce. So when you put that in your calculator, your calculator says 2 over 7. And that's why I said it's always a good idea to do equals even when you're equaling the fraction to itself, like up here. Because it shows and, and it reminds you to reduce your fractions. Okay, and that's the correct answer. Okay. So the, the, those two numbers, 2 and 7, are not in your two-way diagram, but 4 and 14 were. Okay? So we'll be doing plenty more of these in, in these two-way tables, but that's that one for now. I'm presuming the end of my question, but because with these new problem, with these new project math style questions, they tend to go on for several pages. And we know we're on to question four, so we're finished. And you need students, as always, I will see you in the next one.